so it may come as a shock to some people, but Linux isn't perfect. Now, I've made multitudes of videos talking about why it's not perfect. I've talked about why it's really good, but it still has its issues. I'm a full-time Linux user, and I'm a Linux fanboy. I have a Linux channel that I make videos on, and I spend a lot of my time in the Linux community, but I will never, not once, ever say that Linux is perfect. And if you ever hear me say that, well, you'll know that I've been replaced with a pod person. Linux isn't perfect, and I don't think anybody really thinks that it is, because nothing is perfect. But, when you're switching from Windows to Linux, or from Mac to Linux, one of the things that a lot of people fall into, one of the pitfalls, is that they have a tendency to expect perfection. And not perfection, like, as in absolute perfection, but perfection for their situation. Like, they're going to just hop into Linux, and it's going to work from day one. They're going to find all their applications. They're going to have the easiest time of switching ever. And then when it doesn't meet that expectation, they get pissy about it. Or, usually, I mean, some people get pissy about it. I, should, I shouldn't generalize too much, but, you know, some of them do. Or, more likely, the vast majority of them find that they don't have the perfection that they're looking for and therefore go back to the setup that they had before, either on Windows or Mac. The problem with that, of course, is what I said at the beginning. Linux isn't perfect. It's not perfect for anyone. So, if you are a Linux user, and a lot of most of my audience falls into that description, every single one of us knows this. We've all had issues. Like, none, not a single one of us has used the same distro from day one and never had a single problem with it. Now, some people have used the same distro from day one, but I guarantee they've had problems. Whether they're small or major, whatever the case may be, they've had issues because we all have had issues. Either an update borked something, an application stopped running, audio stopped working, your, your Wi-Fi stopped working, whatever the case may be. Maybe a game decided it wasn't going to play anymore in Steam. Any number of things go wrong on any given day when it comes to Linux, and that's just the way that it is. Now, all that being said, Windows, of course, isn't perfect either, so we got to give equal treatment there, and we all know that that's the truth. But when people are switching from a Windows PC or from a Mac and you're coming to Linux, they're expecting their transition to be as smooth as possible. And when it's not, because it's inevitably not going to be as smooth as they hoped it would be, that disappoints them. It fails to meet their expectations of the perfection that they were looking for. And when that becomes the case, they either go back to Mac or back to Windows and leave Linux behind. Now, there's a solution to this, obviously, is just to lower your expectations a little. Now, that sounds horrendous because usually when you're lowering your expectations to something it means that you're you know kind of settling for it and that's not the case in this situation it's just that a lot of people have expectations that are too high for linux linux requires effort the number one thing i've said on this channel for the last four years is that if you're not going to put the effort into learning how to use linux then Linux isn't for you. It requires effort to learn. It's something different. It's not Windows. It's not Mac. They're different things. And just like if you're going to go learn how to do something different in you know, real life, you have to put some effort into learning and acquiring the skill of doing that thing. Linux is no different. And I think that that's something that a lot of people don't really take into account when they switch to Linux. They, they hear that Linux is good. Windows is terrible probably for them in some regard. Either they're, they're hating the updates, they're hating all the advertisements, they're hating the privacy disrespecting assholes from Redmond, whatever it happens to be, right? Any number of reasons to hate Windows. So they finally decide, well, you know, I'm, I feel technical enough to actually use Linux. I'm going to, you know, download an ISO. I've decided on a distro. I, I got it burned onto a USB. I managed to figure out how to get past the boot menu of my PC, which seems to be like the biggest hurdle for a lot of people. And they've installed it. And they have this expectation that it's going to be better than Windows. And while I think that it is better than Windows, that betterness, that better, that, that seemingly better quality is something that you have to work for in order to make it true. 
out of the box, Linux isn't any better than Windows because if you don't know what you're doing. It would actually be worse because you don't know what you're doing. You don't have the applications that you need. You don't know how to do the certain things that you probably are going to need to do, like install graphics drivers or something. You have to be able to use a search engine at least in order to make this thing work well because it's not going to work well out of the box for you chances are now i mean uh, i'm sure there's that one person in the comment sections that's typing away furiously right now that they had the perfect experience i don't believe you uh, not at all uh, i just don't i'm sorry i don't but you know whatever the vast majority of people when they first switch to linux are going to have some issues there are going to be some things that you have to learn about in order to do and if you're not willing to do that because you had expectations that are too high then that's more of a you problem than a Linux problem. That's just the way that it is. The real solution here for the Linux community at large is to ensure that Linux is as easy and ready to go out of the box as possible. Making sure that installing graphics drivers is easy. Making sure that the internet and audio works out of the box. Making sure that the app stores are actually fully stocked and up to date with the, their people's favorite applications as much as possible. Now, obviously, there's going to be holes, right? Adobe is not going to be there. But everybody going into Linux should know that going in already. If they come here expecting Adobe to be here, then they're fools because it's never been here. And all you have to do is like a five second, you know, Google search and you'll know that Photoshop doesn't exist on Linux. It just doesn't. It never has. It probably never will. Same thing with things like, auto, you know, Office or your AutoCAD software, whatever. Chances are those holes are going to be the big like walls that people kind of have that people hit into as they go through the process and they have to be in order to make a successful linux transition you have to be able to look at alternatives and adapt to those alternatives and just sometimes you have to realize that sometimes those alternatives aren't as good so if you're coming from photoshop and you're going to gimp you have to realize that GIMP isn't as good as Photoshop in certain areas. It's just not. It's also not updated nearly as fast. It's not updated fast at all. It's updated very slowly. Eventually, 3.0 will come out, and Brody will be very, very happy at that day. Now, I saw I made a video the other day about actually having tried it. I um, haven't watched it yet, so I don't want to be spoiled, but we'll see. I truly believe that it will come out sometime in my lifetime. Maybe. But the point is, is that GIMP is the alternative to Photoshop, and if you are in a situation where you have to use it, you kind of have to be able to be willing to transition over to it and deal with its oddities and difference, differences. Then, and if you're not, then you're not going to be happy, right? You're going to either have to find a different alternative, which there are some, like Kavita and a few others, or you're just not going to be happy on Linux at all. Maybe you'll have to dual boot or run a VM or something like that, because you can do... Photoshop in a VM if you know what you're doing there. So you could, you could do something like that. It becomes more precarious when you're talking about things like AutoCAD and things like video editing because those require a lot of graphics power. And while you theoretically could do those in a VM, it would require some extra hardware. So the whole point of that is that is that none of this equals a smooth transition for basically anybody because there's going to be that one program or those two programs or the, those couple of games or whatever that you're going to want to use or need to use. And when you can't you either are going to go back to windows or you're gonna be one of those people who stick in the linux community because you really want to and then you find a way to do what you want to do with the alternatives that are available those are the two camps there aren't any others so my whole point of making this video is that people who switch from windows or mac to linux often have an expectation of perfection for them. Not necessarily general perfection, like I said, but perfection for their workflow. And when Linux fails to meet that, usually uh, they'll do one of two things. They'll go right back to Windows and we'll never hear from them again. Or they get on forums and they get into Discord and they say things like, why isn't this working for me? What am I doing wrong? Uh, Linux is garbage. Any number of rude and unnecessary things and the problem isn't really that they're saying those things more. It's that the problem isn't Linux. It's them. They had those expectations. And when you have expectations that are too high, if you expect your girlfriend to be a supermodel and she's not, 
those expectations aren't because of her. They're your fault. You shouldn't have had those ex expectations. You've got to lower your standards just a little if you're going to do this. Now, like I said, said, lowering your standards sounds really, it sounds like I'm putting Linux down. But really what I'm saying is Linux is what it is. It's just, a, it's a good piece of software. It has its own pros and cons, just like everything else. And you can't expect Jesus and, you know, then come in and not find Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was a weird metaphor. I, I, I went all religion there. I don't know why. Anyways, that's it for this one. I, I hope that if you are, because one of the reasons why I want to make this video is that I've seen a lot of people switching to Linux. Like this is a, this has become a big thing. If you, you, if you're on Reddit, you don't go a day seeing these posts. Like I switched to Linux and had all these problems, I had blah, 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 problems, 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 problems. And you know, you're on Twitter, you're on Mastodon, you, you're on Discord, and you see people that are all, you know, really gung-ho about switching to Linux, and then they come up with pro they, they come up to the inevitable problems that Linux pre pre presents to them, and they have issues. They either don't want to deal with those issues because they're expecting perfection, or they're not interested in learning how to deal with them, uh, because again, they were expecting perfection. So th those things are you know, happening more and more often. I think it really, I, it really does feel like Linux is becoming more popular, which is not something that I thought would happen. I just thought it would be a slow and steady, you know, increase, uh, you know, over time. And then maybe it would just level out at like five or 6%, but it feels like Linux is getting more, you know, popular. And because of that, there's more people and they're experiencing the same Linux problems that have been Linux problems since the beginning of time. Those problems don't just go away, even though Linux has gotten better, and it has. The, it, like I said, Linux just requires effort, and if you're not going to put that effort in because you're expecting perfection, that's not a Linux problem, that's a you problem, and you should probably just stay on Windows, or better, change your expectations. Go in and make Linux work for, work for you, because that's what makes Linux great. You can make Linux into the perfect solution for you. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's perfect for you. But the key words there are is that it requires you to make it into that. It's not going to be that out of the box. So that's it for this one. If you have comments on this, you have uh, an opportunity to leave those comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I make Linux content fairly regularly. It's basically the entire purpose of the channel. Linux is in the name. So if you like Linux content, whether you're a longtime Linux user or you're just joining us, hit that subscribe button. I promise I won't be too Linux nerdery. I guess I, I don't know what I, I promise not to be, but I'll, I'll try to be a good Linux content creator for you guys. So uh, again, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, do so. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon, Ko-fi, or YouTube. Those links will also be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on those platforms. All of these fine people, thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. Seriously. And if you want to be awesome too, patreon.com slash linuxcast or head on over to the shop, which you'll find all, an extraordinary amount of merch that I've created over the course of the last year at, sh at shop.thelinuxcast.org. All the proceeds for the shop go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So, Thanks everybody who supports me. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.